All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning into the channel. I'm very appreciative of all of you, your support, your feedback. I'm thankful for the comments. I'm thankful for just everybody who subscribed, new, old. You all are valued and y'all are good for the channel. Thank you. So today we're doing another raw feed haul. Don't particularly like to do it, but when a grocery store is, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share something with y'all. Always pay attention to the expiration dates on stuff. Always pay attention to that. And the reason why I say pay attention to that is because sometimes the sell by price may be substantially cheaper than you know regular price. So I what I like to do is get everything I'm gonna need and I like to go on a certain day when I know you know they starting to move out with the trying to discount the old and move in the new and that's when I come in and I get everything at a discounted price. So I get a lot more and I hurry up get it done. This time I didn't it's been like a two day delay, but I get everything done, freeze it, dog eats good for at least 30 to 60 days, depending on how many, how much I give them. But anyway, the first thing you wanna do, and I should have been more descriptive in the last video, you wanna start by sharpening your knives. So this knife is beat, as you can tell. I've used this a lot, so I got this little cheap Walmart one here. And I just go, and you just want to make sure you get it good and sharp because you're going to need it. And feeding raw, it really takes very, very long time. Man. I can't even deny that. It, it really takes a long time. Beneficial for the dog, but it just... It just takes a long time. And I'm not complaining, I'm just thankful that I'm able to uh, do this. But it wouldn't be cost effective if the grocery store didn't get caught slipping. Pay attention to the expiration dates, y'all. When you feed raw, you get a lot of insight on what you, what you intaking, you know. Because, for instance, yesterday I opened, I just poked a little hole in it and it was rancid. So I took it back to the grocery store and hey, free of charge. So the discounted price was like, the regular price was like eight bucks for a bag of leg quarters. Um, they discounted it down to $3 when I got it. So I went and got a new bag yesterday for $3. So, and that bag I'm going to keep. So I'm just going to, you know, just to let you know. So there's, there's, there's little ways that you could, this, you make it work for you and benefit your household. All that good stuff. And I would have done this video live, but guys, I always keep gloves on hand too. I got my gloves on hand. So... First thing you want to do is sharpen your knives. Make sure um, everything is set up correctly. And that's that's one of the Mercedes-Benz pet peeves. Um, uh, you know, not a pet peeve, but more like a rule of thumb is you get your work done more accurately and efficiently when you are prepared. When everything is laid, everything that you need is laid out and you're prepared. So... I already have most of my meat that I'm going to use. It is in the sink at this point. And what I'm going to do next is pour some vinegar down in it, clean it real good. And guys, for those who know, it's definitely a process. It is a process. There's nothing, there's no shortcuts to this. So I'm dumping my peas in, dumping my peas in, and I keep the old bags just so I can have something, best choice, I don't know if y'all familiar with that, but 
I keep my old bags so that I can have something to use when I throw stuff away. Right. right back. All right, so I done emptied my peas into the pot. And some of you may be wondering why, why is he using peas? Well, the thing with peas is, the thing with raw feed in general and it's my rule of thumb is you want to add as much fiber as a dog can stand. Now, some people say in a wild, a wolf or a dingo or a hyena, or not a hyena, but a wolf, a dingo, a fox, or a coyote, whatever, they don't eat vegetables or anything like that. So why would you give your dog greens or stuff like that? Well, a domesticated dog, the their enzymes are a little bit different from the enzymes that are in wild animals see their bodies can break down you know can't break down vegetables and stuff or anything like that whereas dogs have been conditioned or through kibble they've been putting vegetables and kibble for kibble for so long until you know if you just give a dog straight protein every single day you'll probably have a hairless dog a very unhealthy dog and it may have blocks and intestines. So that's just, I mean, you do what you want, but just in my humble opinion, I'd much rather do it the way that I see fit, with what makes sense to me, what I know works for my dog. So what I'm doing now is opening up my tuna. Now, I might have spent more on just like the can side of stuff than I did for um, the um, the the big meat, you know. And I like to scrape. And I like to get everything out of there. I don't leave nothing. You know, you spend your hard-earned money, you get everything out of it for sure. And then adding a little water here and there, it, it will help in the long run. And again, I use um, the mineral water for um, to help aid in digestion as far as the dog's digestion go. And I don't have that up here right this second, but I will go get some after a while and when I make it to that point. And tools make the job, so it's you going if you do it right, it's gonna take you about three hours. You know, now some people like to use grinders, but I like to keep mine as as um, true to its natural state as possible, if that makes sense. Yeah. So this is the canned tuna that I'm putting in there. And you get a lot of B6, you get a lot of, there's a lot of vitamins in this stuff. So everything is vitamin based, you know. So she's not lacking in that. And I don't have to do a multivitamin or go out my way to buy multivitamins for because I have that portion of this covered just through her diet alone so that's a plus it's one less thing you have to worry about doing this all right moving right along um i'm gonna clean up and i'll come right back all right so we're in the cleaning process now after letting the meat sit for about 30 minutes in vinegar, just letting it sit soak, I do a rinse cycle. Uh, I take the water back out 
add more clean water, vinegar, rinse and repeat about three or four times, maybe five to seven times. It don't matter. What it does matter, you need to do as many, many times as possible to the water come clean. And that's what I'm working on at this point. So y'all bear with me. Um, we pretty much moving according to plan. And my spoon is about to tap out. This hole right here may be a little more than the last. That's what it's starting to look like thus far. I'm going to try to leave it in its, instead of doing as much cutting as I did the last time. I'm not going to cut as much as I did the last time. I'm just going to, you know, try to get as much done as possible without all the cutting. All righty. So, so, a lot of people wonder why are you using tilapia? Why are you using tilapia? Why, why, why? Well, when you know, you know. A lot of people don't understand tilapia. Tilapia, a tilapia. If you laid in a in a pond full of nothing but tilapia, if you laid in there long enough, they eat you. A tilapia will eat anything. Period. Anything. And a lot of um, uh, water resource recovery facilities. I don't know about in the United States, but um in other countries they use tilapia to clean the human fecal matter out of the water and that's why you shouldn't buy farm raised tilapia because they it, you know, and i'm not saying all countries i'm not saying you know don't quote just do your own research but i know what i know to be true is that they are used to clean human feces out of um, from water resource recovery facilities. And that's why I don't eat tilapia. Um, another thing is they feed them with antibiotics. I mean, they might just come through and just, you know, just toss it out in the water. So if you get sick and, and you know, if you as the human purchase it, you eat it, you get sick and you're sick as a dog and the doctors can't figure out why the antibiotics they're giving you, like your body is refusing it or your body's not absorbing it for some reason, it's because of the antibiotics that was in the food, the animals that you ate. You know what I'm saying? All of these animals have antibiotics, they, they get feed them antibiotics. So that's just another one of them things, you know, just have to be mindful of, I guess. I mean, nobody's perfect. I'm pretty sure, you know, the government is doing I mean, I would say, I, 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 you know, I would hope the best they could, you know. Some of them may not. But I do know that to be factual with the tilapia thing. And, and, and even with chicken. You will see when I start cutting the skin off this, this chicken, and you will see, I can show you the ones with steroids in it. I'll show you. I'm pretty sure I'm going to run in at least a few of them. So what we do, a little more vinegar. And you just let it sit, you know? Let it sit, baby, let it sit. Let that water get good and clean. And if it wasn't for my wife, I wouldn't know to do this. I know, the last, I mean, what I used to do, I used to just pour blood and everything into the pot with it, you know, and I don't think that's the best thing to do. I mean, you could do what you want to do, teach his own, but 
I choose not to do that. It's it's just not good. You know what I mean? I mean, you're dealing with, you got to think, there's a lot of parasites. A lot. So, the thing with, you know, some people may be saying, well, why would you give that to the dog if, you know, antibiotics is that and third? Again, you have to understand, their genetic makeup is not that of a human. You know, dogs have like their systems have an uncanny ability to fight off stuff. It's almost like an alligator, for instance. An alligator is immune to just about any, anything. That's why when you, if you get bit by an alligator, the first thing they do is treat you for bacteria because it's just like, you know, you gotta think, they don't brush their teeth and they eat rotten stuff. So they're immune to just about anything, you know, and dogs are the same way. A dog will eat anything. I mean, I've had times where, you know, me and my dog would be strength training or walking or whatever. And I might just turn her loose just to stretch her legs a little bit. I find her quarter mile down the road eating some rotten flesh or trash off, you know, just out of, off the ground or out of a container or something. She'd eat it, you know. That's why I say dogs will eat anything, man. But the thing with a dog, though, they're so intelligent, they're not going to eat something that they know is not good for them. They're going to they're gonna eat what, what they, they, like, they know what they can eat, can and can't eat. Put it like that. So we're moving right along. I try to do beef liver. I got beef liver from the last haul. The thing about the, the liver is it, it scares me a little bit because I be thinking that, you know, there's a, I need to break out the uh, metronidazole or the trimethoprim. Because blood in the stool or whatever and usually it just, you know, when I'm feeding raw, it's usually just that, that um, liver that's running through. They, they, for some reason, my dog, she just doesn't digest that well. So I don't use a lot. I just use like maybe one or two strips, cut it up good, and put it in the hall for, yeah. So, Make sure y'all hang on to your bags for sure. Please hang on to all your old bags. It makes cleaning up a lot easier, trust me. You, you'd be surprised at how easy the cleanup is if you just kept your old bags for real. If you can, just dump it as you go. So I got my knives good and sharpened. And we're going to go through and I think I want to use scissors though. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use scissors for this. You know, you just cut it. Little nice little pieces for and again, guys, you know, teach its own. There's there's a lot of different ways you could you could do this. You know, there's no right or wrong way. I feel like as long as you're feeding your dog, you could be getting the raw feed out of grocery stores, you could be getting or pet stores, or you can do it yourself. But as long as you're feeding your dog, it, it doesn't matter. You know, at the end of the day, it really don't matter. And another safety tip, y'all, make sure you wear gloves. Make sure you don't have any open wounds or cuts on your hand because you're dealing with a lot of bacteria and that could be, that could be bad for your health. We'll put it like that. And I'm sorry about the quality on the mic that I had, that I used on the last video. I. It was a Walmart mic. I think I spent like 
This is like a little $20 wireless microphone. And I said, well, I'll just not use that again because the quality was just terrible. So, to say the least. But it was worth a shot. I'm going, you know, I'm, I'm, I post, I'm going to post the video anyway with the bad quality because I, you know, I just feel like it's necessary to do. I took my time out to make the video and you can hear what I'm saying, but it's just like the quality is just not what I would like personally. So. Yep, yep, yep. So I hope, you know, these videos, the purpose in these videos is not to make it seem like I know everything about dogs, because I don't, I'm still learning. I mean, I know what I know. I've been dealing with dogs for very, well, pit bulls anyway, for a very, very, very long time. And I didn't have any formal grooming, no formal training. Everything I learned, most of the stuff I learned was hands-on. And I was fascinated by the dogs of the 90s, the dogs of the 80s. You know, I was fascinated by those dogs. And I'm not perfect, you know. They're, they're you know, I've, I've, I, let's just, I've done a lot with these dogs, you know. And it's not, it's not a matter of what you've done with the dogs, it's how you take care of them, you know? And at the end of the day, that's all they want. They just want to be loved on and, you know, they just want to be taken care of. They want to be treated like an extended part of the family, you know? I mean, that's, I mean, that's bare necessity, you know, at this point, you know? It doesn't take a lot. But that vinegar is really cleaning this stuff, you know. Really cleaning it good, cleaning it real good. So I pretty much got, um, got everything going. I got to break out the scale, and I think I'm gonna do a pound per bag because she, these dogs slim down really, really fast. What's it, you know, like two or three days a row, you know, it just seemed like they are really getting leaned out, ringed out real good. So, you know, you could do like a filler along with it, like kibble or something. Because if you're not, if you're not entering in any competitions or anything like that, I don't see the reason why you should uh, be trying to feed, you know, like, super, super, super duper protein, you know, and, and, you know, to sum it up, you don't need to do all of that if you're not in a competition, you know, just feed the dog, and that's it. And a lot of people like to complain, you know, and, I, and, I, and I'm thankful because in a survival situation, check this out. In a survival situation, you know, we still have food because, you know, not only you got what you have in the in your pantry, but you also have you also have your um, you also have your bags, you know. And with the skin, chicken skin, I get rid of it. I, I just, I don't chance it. All right, I'm back. So we got the San Pellegrino. That's going to aid in the system digestion. It's going to help the food move down a little quicker. It's just like another carbonated, not carbonated, but another, um, well, that is carbonated, but another, it's like carbonated fiber in a sense. So it's like if you're trying to lose weight and you can't figure out what to drink, drink uh, carbonated 
this stuff right here, San Pellegrino, because it'll make you feel full. Like you don't, like once you drink like a little bit of this, you'll feel full. You know, you don't just gorge out on a whole bottle at one time. It's just like, you know, gradually. So the next thing we're doing is we're gonna clean the skin off of this chicken. And I like to clean the skin off the chicken because the last time I, I mean, again, I told this story in the last one, I just couldn't figure out why my dog was losing hair and it was because of, she's allergic to chicken skin, whatever they use to clean this stuff. And if you ever seen this stuff get processed, you'll know it ain't a very pleasant thing to, to watch. So it's really not a very pleasant thing to watch. So I just clean it off every time. And you're not gonna get all of it, but just get as much as you can. If, if your dog is allergic, and if the dog's not, if you like me, and you just, I mean, I just simply prefer not having this on the chicken anyway. That's just me, so. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Probably should double bag that. But everybody has their way of doing things, you know? There's no right or wrong way. Some people listen to the so-called gurus and, you know, you try to go by what they say, but, you know, experience is the best teacher, man. I'm telling you. Hands-on experience is the best teacher. That is period, point blank. So usually when you see that, that um, sell by date with meat, you better believe it. But, you know, it's, it all depends on how you prep it, you know. Because the first thing that goes sour is the little, the, Little, um, I don't know what they call it. It's the little thing that's in the packing tray that the meat sit on. That's the first thing that'll go sour. That's your telltale sign that your meat is going bad. Is that? And I could be wrong. I don't. I'm not. I'm not a butcher or anything like that. But that's just, to my knowledge, what what I feel like is right because I've witnessed it. I've had that happen multiple times where I bought meat that I was going to cook and it was no good. And come to find out, the meat didn't smell bad. It was just that little thing that sit in the bottom of the tray. That was bad. So what we're doing here is just kind of cleaning off all the skin. So y'all get the point. I'm not going, I'm not going, you know, drive this out and like have y'all watching this whole video and this is all I'm doing but y'all get the point for sure you know and if you can get your hands on one of them nice meat grinders like I would like to have one of those um those um I forget the I think it's lemons or no it's limb it's limbs something it's limb something but they only got a few of them, but I like all of them. I take any one of them. I like those things. They really, they crunch bones and all. And then you could just have all your meat look like ground beef, and which is, I'd say, easier on a dog, you know, maybe. But I like for my dog to get the, you know, because these bones, when they chew the bones, you know, they clean, it cleans the teeth too. So there's a lot of vitamin C in these bones you know especially if you don't give your dog I'm not vitamin C but calcium I get them too mixed up <clears throat> so if you're not giving your dog calcium tablets daily you know feeding her all wouldn't be a bad source because if they got a calcium deficiency you will know it 
you will know it. And calcium is vital to your dog's health. It's vital. Now to some of those guys with those big, big, big kennels, you know, you know, y'all, y'all pretty much, you know, do what you do. But I do this because I just like for my dog to eat good, you know. I don't think anything's, I don't think anything wrong with that. Yeah, I mean, I feel like with all the recalls and stuff that's on food now, man, it, we, we, we coming up on something real sinister. I'm going to be honest about that. We are coming up on something very, very sinister that most of us Americans ain't, ain't never been exposed to, ain't used to. You know, some of these third world countries are used to what we're about to experience is what it seemed like that's just my theory like i can feel it you know what i mean it just seems like that's gonna happen because it's like how do we know all of these recalls how do we know that that this is not staged just to get all of the wealthy people to go out and send their drivers and stuff out to buy buy up all the food while the taxpaying common man thinking that the food's bad for him when in actuality they're just buying it all up and storing it up for themselves and their family and you're just trying to figure out you know you have to wait until you raise your own chickens and you know grow your own vegetables and stuff like that you know it could just be a, a plot or something I'm no conspiracy theorist but those are just my ideas I mean I feel like that's I feel like that that's that's true, you know. I don't see why that wouldn't be true. Because governments governments don't always tell the truth. The people that work in government don't always tell the truth. You know, I guess they figure what's a little white lie here and there, you know. But I'm no conspiracy theorist. But I just, I really feel like that's going to happen. With all these recalls, man, it's, it's, it's not natural. It's not normal. It's not a normal occurrence. I mean, back when I was coming up, you know, I didn't, we didn't experience this kind of stuff. You know, in the, in the 90s. You know, and most of us, as as children, we didn't. I didn't eat. I I didn't start eating meat heavy. Let's just say the most meat that I ate when I was young might have been once a day. You know what I'm saying? Because like you could, like you know, my auntie, God rest her soul, very beautiful woman, very very strong, um, very intelligent. She would um. She would cook, and I'd have to sit to that darn table for hours, man, because I just didn't want to. Man, I just couldn't do cabbage, and I couldn't do the, the squash and stuff like that. I just couldn't do it, you know. I just didn't want to do it. But when it came to meat, you know, I just eat the piece of chicken because you, you know, you get one drumstick and get your vegetables and stuff like that. That's it, and you're good. But now, you know, we're eating twice as much, three times as much as that in one sitting now. You know, my, my rule of thumb, you know, um, every, every day for lunch break, you know, guys, boys get together like, hey, um, what, what, what are we eating today? All right, well, we're going to go here, we're going to go there. And I kept noticing that every time we ate, I would come back to the shop and I'd have both my hands full. Like I'd have a big drink in this hand, I have a bag of food in this hand, 
And usually when it's like that, you eat too damn much. If you got to carry your lunch for your lunch break in both hands, you eat too much for sure. So I cut back, you know, and all you got to do, guys, ladies, and gentlemen, whoever you are, is go back to go back to childhood. You know, and I'm, I'm being serious. Go back to childhood. Just if you could remember, try to remember. And, and if your parents are still with you, ask them, how did I eat when I was young? What, what was my diet? What did I like the most? Because generally, usually what you liked as a kid, it, you really, it really don't get away from you. That's why a lot of us adults still eat candy, you know, because it, it don't get away from you, you know? But um, yeah, that's, that's, man. We eat, we eat a lot, for sure. We eat a lot. We eat a lot. But <clears throat> I'm just curious to see what's going, what's going to transpire with this, with what's going on in the world, you know? Because you got, you know, all of these other countries basically saying, we don't want your currency no more. We don't want, we don't, we don't honor the dollar. You know, that's, it's like a huge slap in the face, really, to, and it's not us. It's, it, guys, ladies and gentlemen, if you work a nine to five, if you don't dictate public policy, if you, um, if, if, if you don't celebrate a holiday and a bank will open for you if the bank don't open for you on a holiday then you're a regular person you are not making these other countries hate america you're not doing that it's the people that you put in office whether that's donald trump whether that's kamala harris whether that's joe biden whether that's george bush it don't matter it's the people that you put in office and the people that's around them that's causing these other countries to hate us and you and, and and when you when they mix these people in with us, they look just like us, like normal working people. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, these other countries hate everybody, and not just them. So when you if you pay taxes, you just you 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 know you're feeding the machine. You're just as guilty as you know you you you're guilty by association. You know you are funding wars. You are funding this stuff. You know, and I hate that I don't like talking about politics too much, but, you know, values are values. You know, I think when it comes down to um, all of the stuff that's going on in the school systems, you know, with, with they're teaching kids that about sexuality at age, you know, age five and six, you know what I mean? It's okay to, to, to you, if you're not a girl, if you're a girl and you want to be a boy, then we'll call you, you know, what's your boy name, whatever, whatever, you know, and, and people are accepting that. People accept that. Now, don't get me wrong. Do I have anything against um, people who, who are like that? No, I don't have anything against them. In fact, some of those people are the nicest people in the world. They just, they just you know, may be traumatized or they may have personal things going on that's causing them to, to think that way, you know, because you never know what to drive somebody to, 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 to just completely change their outlook on life, you know. There's, there's, I mean, there's some traumatic things that can happen to people. That's just like um, some people, when their wives or, or their mothers pass, they wear their parents or they, they wear their clothes because it you know it's the grief is driven into that so i don't judge these people i don't have anything against these people i love everybody equally you know but i just don't like how they try to you know make these kids believe this stuff you know i mean i think the best thing you could do is bring, get them kids out of them public schools and teach them yourself you know because the way I was brought up, I'm, and I'm so thankful for the way I was brought up, 
You know, it takes a village to raise a man. It takes a, a community, a village to raise a man and a woman. You know what I mean? It really do. And those values have depreciated over the years. You know, they've depreciated severely. And people are just confused, you know. And, and the, you know, in my, my humble opinion, the, the farther you get away from a higher power, man, it just makes you 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 start doing things that don't make even make sense to you. In some points, it just don't make sense to you. And that's when you know you don't want too far. Is when things just don't make sense to you, and you're the one you're the one administering these types of behavior. Yeah. But nothing against, and I don't want y'all to, to, you know, and if any of my subscribers are like that, if you, if you are like that, then hey, I have nothing against you. You're, you're still welcome to my channel. I'll still treat you like somebody. I'll still be respectful to you. You know, do I agree with the lifestyle? No. But do I judge you? Will I judge you for the lifestyle you live? No. No, I'm going to treat you how I want to be treated. And that's that's simple as that. If I don't have anything nice to say to you, then I can you can bet your bottom dollar that I won't say nothing to you, you know. And sometimes I have to bite my tongue because I look at a lot of these other videos on YouTube. And these guys just don't care what they say to people. You know, they don't care how they treat people. And then some of the same people you disrespect and you don't even know. These people could be, you might have to sit in front of these people one day and that person might be your judge. That person might be your lawyer. That person might be your doctor. That's why you, you never know where your help gonna come from. So that's why you gotta be, that's why I tell people, you gotta be respectful on this YouTube stuff, man. Some of these guys get on, on these um, platforms and they don't, they don't talk about you directly but they'll try to do it indirectly. Well, that's just as worse. You know, that's just as worse. And then when you go to their channel, you know, they, they, they probably ain't post no video in eight months, a year. You know what I'm saying? But they got the time to go around and make fun of everybody else. That's one thing I don't do. I don't do bullies and I don't do that. It's one thing I can't I can't stand a bully. And I'm not talking about the dog, but I'm talking about human. Human bullies, I don't like them. You know, if you want to take me off, you know, bullies, that's that's one of them things. I don't like a bully. I don't like a bully. I have no sympathy for bullies when they get what they when they get what they when they get their what what's deserved, I have no sympathy for them. You know, because they don't know how to treat people. They don't know how to treat people. So y'all be careful on this internet, man. Be careful. Be respectful to one another. Like I said, I've been, I'm a, I'm a real big music guy. I love music. I've always loved music. Music has played a huge role in my life. You know, from... You know, I listen to classic rock. I listen to alternative music. I listen to um, R&B. Well, I don't know. Nah, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I got to be honest. Now, that love music, I don't listen to. I just can't listen to love music, man. It, 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 it makes you weak. You know, it just it's something about it that makes you weak. And I'm not, I'm not, God, I just can't do it. I'm not one for that. But I love music. And I will listen to some R&B stuff. Don't get me wrong. But all of that begging and crying, when somebody done left you, they left you. That's it. Stop crying. Stop calling them. Get over it. Go do some push-ups. Every time you think about it, do some push-ups. You'll get over it real quick because you're going to get tired of doing them damn push-ups every, every five seconds, every five minutes. You're going to get tired of that. But guess what? On the flip side of that, you're going to have a really nice body and... That's just setting you up for another, uh, you know, setting you up for, you know, something that, that might be better for you, you know? Who knows? 
I'm no, I'm no relationship therapist or nothing like that, but I'm just saying. So we got the skin, and this skin, like I, I'm, like I could have been done with this, but it's just the skin process. Just it really takes, takes forever. It seems like, and then I, I'm, I'm not halfway I'm not even halfway because I still got to cut the stuff up you know grind I gotta cut it up and do all of that good stuff cut and mix up this that and the third so it's it's definitely a process definitely a process but yeah, but you know, honestly, guys, your heroes are in your backyard. Though. That old farmer riding down the road in the middle of the road with that tractor that you shooting birds at and cussing out and and throwing bottles and cans at—that's the real hero. That's the real hero. That's the hero with no, you know, don't get no credit. You know, don't get no credit. And I'm going to tell you, they you got some farmers out there, they know that, but they, it's their way of life and they keep moving. They don't stop. They don't worry about it. They keep moving right along. And, and some of them do it because they love it. Some of them do it for the dollar. <clears throat> But one thing I know to be true, you do things for the dollar, it don't last long. <laughs> Excuse me, you got to have some kind of passion in what you're doing. You know, otherwise, you're wasting your time. That's why I figure you do what you love and call it work. Like that country song, do what you love and call it work. I think I'm gonna let this video run. I ain't gonna try to, I'll probably stop it when I go to cutting, chopping, but I ain't gonna. Um, so far, I don't, I don't see no signs of a whole lot of steroids. I don't see a whole lot of signs of steroids. But y'all know what's interesting to me? I find jobs interesting. Like, no matter what you do, like, there is something that, that, like, no matter what you do, it's something that you can learn that could help somebody else. You know? No matter what you do. Whether that's working on cars, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're a... You know, you were a minister, or you were, you know, you were you were a professional fighter, or whatever. Like jobs are so interesting, and if I could, if if that if that could be my job, yeah, this one, this definitely sounds steroids, but not much. If that could be my job, where all I had to do is just simply go around and you know just I mean, just, I mean I, I, I'm kind of all over the place but jobs are very very interesting to me you know I just think everybody's job has shaped them in one way one one form or another they these jobs have, have shaped them anyway we're gonna stop right there I'm gonna shut it off and we'll be back all right so I'm putting up the the calf liver now and like I said their bodies don't digest this well so you want to come here boy give them a liver treat
All right, go. Go, get up. Go, go, get up. Go, 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 go. So if you got, so you can make your own little liver treats, like cut them up in small pieces, put them in a bag. And like if you're training them or something, you could just give them a little, make a treat out of it, you know? At least they could chew on it, but it will, be, you know, their body can absorb some of those. Um, and this is frozen, by the way, so that's why I'm struggling with it. But it'll give their bodies some of the iron that it needs. So, done with that. Pull this guy off. Let's see. I'm going to do this. Go. Get out. Go. 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 This guy. And guys, this is this this stuff is heavily discounted because it was on its way out. You know, it was on it was on its way out, so it was heavily discounted. And I do a lot of repeat myself. I gotta stop that. I mean I prefer filler words than repeat myself all the time. It just sounds well, I ain't gonna say that. That just doesn't sound good to me. And I ain't never been much of a dresser. Like, you know, dressing animals and stuff like that. But I'm trying. I'm trying my best, y'all. My bestest. making progress guys ladies gentlemen um i support anybody who who take care of, you know who puts time and effort into something other than themselves i, I admire that they're very admirable yeah not a fan of selfishness selfish people not a fan of um, disrespectful people. As y'all know, it's just a common thing. It's just have a little bit of common courtesy. You know, some channels are, yeah. All they wanna do is talk about one another, which is weird. But nevertheless, we are getting this skin worked off, guys. I'm trying my best to get it off.
Those are some dogs that I would like to own. What lines that I would like to own? I have no particular line per se. You know, I just kind of like whatever, you know. If it's good, it's good, you know, I like it. And I probably should get my glass, safety glasses. Get out of here. Go. Wow. Like I'm, I'm, yo, this is, oh man. I'm feeling the ribs on this chicken. They're all broken on this side. These things go through so much, like stress when they're being processed or um, dispatched. They go through so much stress. I mean, literally both sides of the ribs are broken. All of them. That's why I want to delve into this vegan lifestyle. Because I think it's, it'd be better for me. You know? And from what they say, the results are paramount, you know. But, I mean, I happen to, I love animals. I've always loved animals. Just never was a fan of birds too much, but I do love animals. And I hate to see them, I hate to see them suffer. I mean, I really do. I know animal right type type guy. Now don't don't get it twisted. Survival situation, yeah, I will eat that chicken. You know, I would be what you call a hybrid. I eat that chicken. Some cases to get hungry enough. Yeah. Rabbit, anything out there in the wild, yeah, I'll take them down. If I can catch it, I'm gonna eat it. Period. That's that's just the way I feel. That's that's my mentality when it comes down to surviving. When when it comes down to surviving, you gotta think like an animal. You know what I mean? You get in a fight with an animal, you gotta have that instinct in your mind. You gotta will to live, and ain't nothing gonna stop you from doing that. That's how you gotta think. That's how you gotta approach life. You know. So we've been at this for about two hours now. It's, like I say, it is time consuming. But yeah, animals appreciate it for sure. a bad idea to kind of get you somebody to help you as far as you know maybe give them a task pay them to cut the meat or wash it or whatever the case may be wherever you see fit whatever makes the job quicker you know but I like to take my time and do it because I like to approach this with love I, I treat all of these as if it's my first time doing it you know so <sighs>
and sometimes you gotta give it a good whack. So y'all get the point, y'all see what I'm doing? I'm gonna pause it and try to get this done. So I bring it back when I run into something more. Look y'all. Look at these steroids. This is this has been given steroids. Look at those muscles. Look at those muscles in that. Look at that. You, you really can't see like I can see. Look at that. I mean, it's all knotted up, you know? Now, you can't say this about a dog because... But a chicken? Come on, man. This chicken ain't doing no exercises like that. Look at how small that leg is. So this thing has been laying on one side for a long time. Look how big that leg is compared to this leg. Look at it. That's steroids, yeah. Look at that. Hey, my people. Check this out, y'all. Here's another one. Steroid feel. Steroid feel. Look at those muscles. It's unbelievable. And when you eat this, you wonder why these kids are getting so big. And you wonder why we're so big. Can you imagine if everybody in America power lifted just on a normal diet? What would we look like? This is a steroid filled chicken. Look at that. And you see how small the other one was compared to this? Day and night. Yeah. All right, so as y'all can see, I got a good healthy mess here. Um, I'm going to put some of my olive oil in. And again, everybody should know this, the more oil, the better, the more oil, the better. And the reason why oil is good, it's almost like, um, how can I put this? Maintaining, well, I ain't gonna say that because a lot of people don't know cars like that. So I'm just gonna say, kind of like um, just lubricating the joints and all of that good stuff. Oil is good for that. Good for the coat, good for the skin. Um, it's good for, I mean, a plethora of benefits when it comes down to oil. So use plenty of oil. Throw a little bit of that in there. And it doesn't matter what kind of oil you use. It could be anything. It doesn't matter. So we got that done. Now we got the counter clean, semi clean. So I'm gonna move on to the bagging portion, which I'm gonna pull out my trusty bamboo glass kitchen scale by Taylor. And Taylor don't sponsor me, but for what it is, it's a decent scale. Come from Walmart, I think it was like, uh, crap, 20 bucks maybe. 10 bucks, something like that. Wasn't overpriced. Wasn't very expensive. Wasn't very expensive at all. So what I'm gonna do is grab another set of gloves here. And turn my scale on. And I probably should tear it but all right so y'all get the point see where i'm at we're gonna bag it weigh it and freeze it so that's the whole purpose and i should get about maybe 30 days out of this bag here so what i do is just take a little bit out of here maybe two scoops of the liquid and also put vitamin um, B12 in there, a little bit of, um, yeah, vitamin B, liquid B12. And I usually just freehand my um, my calcium, vitamin C, um, Cosequin, things like that. I just freehand it. So, and um, let's see, I think I'll do... I think I'll do 
do a write it a pound. How about that? We'll, we'll, we'll say a pound. So that's 15 ounces there. So that's a pound three eight. So that's that's fair enough. That's fair enough. And usually, I you you, you want to give them more than just a couple ounces. Like I said, she's not in any competition, so I'm not gonna give them um, twelve to thirteen, maybe fourteen ounces. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna do a solid pound. You know pound and a half somewhere in there so because when you feed them raw it it, it really um it really rings them out so you want to keep that in mind when you feed them raw because you don't want your dog to be you know looking like one of them if you, you know what i'm saying <laughs> you like you're looking like you don't feed your dog when your dog probably eat better than you. And I think it's more water in this than anything. I might have put too much uh, water in that. So that's nine ounces. Gonna do let do that. This should be right at it's fifteen ounces. Do a couple of these. So we're gonna go over to pound maybe three. Okay, so that's fair. Alright, so I just wanted to eat a little more because last time I did it, you know, it I felt like she didn't have enough to eat. And I don't like feeling that way. I like for them to eat good and you know have a full belly after exercise and she does a lot of exercising so I have to I put emphasis on good feed and for those with bullies that's got skin maladies and stuff like that man y'all should really consider the raw diet because it is grossly beneficial in my humble opinion, is definitely beneficial because it'll stop them dogs from losing all of their fur and stuff. Because some of those dogs are allergic to kibble, and manufacturers don't want to. All recalls ain't caught, by the way. Let me let me just say that a lot of mistakes in these manufacturers, they get swept under the rug. So a lot of these dogs are you know, could be eating contaminated stuff, or then again, they could just be allergic to the kibble, and that's what's causing them to lose their fur and stuff like that. So that's something you need to keep in mind too. But all in all, I'm glad y'all get the point. Um, feeding raw is good. There's an endless debate on it um, as to what's the best thing to feed your dog. Some people got schedule some people got a chart some people swear theirs is better than others i'm just here to help you just to give you an idea of what you know what i'm saying like i i, I mean if you use it you use it if you don't you don't have to it's fine but i'm not here to try to put mine on a pedestal or put what i do on a pedestal because you know i'm no different from anybody else i mean i just know what works for my dog you know and that old saying that if the shoe fits, wear it, or if, if you know, one, one size fit all, I'm sorry. The old saying one size fit all is not true when it comes down to raw feed. And if somebody's telling you that, then they are lying to you. And and that goes the same for American Pit Bull Terriers too. This right here might, what I put in this dog, what I put in this bag or this feed might not work for the next man dog. You know what I'm saying? Somebody dog might be allergic to B12, liquid B12. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, one size don't fit all. Let's keep that in mind. But anyway, we're not trying to prolong you. I thank y'all for hanging out with me. 
staying tuned in. I appreciate y'all feedback. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, if you will. Um, we'll try to get more content out to you. I enjoy doing this. Y'all keep me going. I thank you for it. It's, it's greatly appreciative with all of the feedback. I really enjoy that, you know. And for the record, you know, please don't send me messages or, you know, about, you know, just being ignorant. Because I'm just going to block you. You know what I'm saying? That's period, point blank. I'm just going to block you. You come to me ignorant, you're going to get blocked. I just don't have the... I don't have the time for it, you know? I don't. And I know who doing it. They come from other channels doing it because they want to get me involved with all of the, you know, the drama, the back and forth, that kind of crap. Because I see some of the same people that come to my channel leaving comments. They be on the other people's channel leaving comments. And they just like to see stuff started, like to see people go back and forth. But this is not that channel. This channel is only here to educate um, communicate and grow. So thank y'all. Y'all take care. Y'all be easy. We out of here. Also, guys, I want to let y'all know, guys and ladies and gentlemen, I say, wash the bowls every single day. I mean, I know sometimes you're not going get to get to wash them every single day. If you can't wash them every single day, just let them soak in bleach. Because bacteria can build up really, really fast. So, you know, just keep that in mind. That's just another little tip for you. Keep your dog healthy. And, um, yeah, just like do your due diligence. Make sure. And I love Ajax because it's antibacterial. But make sure you um uh, make sure you do that for sure. I'm not gonna get with all that. I ran out of bags. And I'm gonna keep that glove on. Use one of these bags. And I'm gonna put the rest of this in here. Which should be roughly. But anyway, I'm just kind of rambling at this point. But thank y'all for tuning in. I hope this video helps you and your raw feed endeavors, whoever you may be. Um, so y'all take care. Y'all be easy, and I'm gone.